Hey everyone, and welcome back to Dracky Cup 7, back to group stage A as we continue casting uh, the games thereof. And we're going to start out with A Game Inks versus Houston. GVG, I love it, on Torn Crater. Uh, and they're both in chats, so that's pretty cool. Um, A Game, obviously the favorite, as you would expect. <laughs> he subbed and tells me to stop. <laughs> no, no, man, I can't. <laughs> I gotta keep going, that's, that's the rules. <laughs> Thanks for the sub, though. Uh, this is next level bribery. <laughs> well, let's read the info.txt here. A-game's gonna pick Galzian first, and Houston matches it. Although, I thought he'd been playing, uh... Coalition before, but perhaps... Perhaps I'm just wrong about that. Is that true? Were you playing Coalition, or was it Con F that you were playing mostly in previous games? But anyway, uh, A-game's gonna pick Torrent Alt. Of course, he likes this map quite a lot. He did, in fact, create this map, too. Um, so that's obviously gonna see a lot of play from him, you would expect. But a good map, I'd say, for, uh... Well, pretty much any faction, really. Um, pretty long rush distance, I would say, and unlike the old Torin Crater, it's not, you know, you're not, like, flush up against these rocks, so it's not like you can just instantly die, um... Not like you can just instantly die to, you know, certain types of rushes and stuff like the old Torin Crater was, so... Pretty excited to see how this match turns out. Looks like it is going to be Sandskimmer Fab first for Houston here. Uh, he says he did play Sobon in the last tournament. He's wanting to try out Galzian Conef. Fun, well, as a Galzian main myself, I have to say, I approve. And he's getting tech. Yes. Now this is, of course, the thing that you often will see me criticize about uh, players playing Galzian when they're especially new to it. They don't get tech. You have to have tech if you're going to play GVG. Um, and he's got tech, look at that. So Soul Chip Fab gonna be the choice for Houston. Uh, and A-Game is actually gonna go ref mode first, though. This is something he's really been trying to push recently. Obviously, uh, we used to think it was just abs- well, I mean, I wouldn't even say think, it used to just be absolute suicide to do this in- in GVG. Um, but these days, carriers being able to defend against the Soul Chips, and, uh, railguns are still very strong against this, but, um, you know, there's thoughts that this can actually maybe be a holdable build and you can go ref mode first in GVG, which would be great for the variety of that type of matchup. And he's gonna try it here. We saw this also in games against Marchwaden, if you remember. I was on a Firebase Krill. First Sand Scanner gonna come over here and scout. Two Salvagers there, but once he sees the carrier, this is gonna be the tell for Houston. There it is. So now he knows, okay, it must be ref mode first, unless my opponent is an idiot, and he's A-game, so it's unlikely. <laughs> Obviously, otherwise he'd be leaving the main base and have, like, no eco here, which would be terrible. So if Houston knows this, then the first thing he's got to do is attack, and do as much damage as he can to the to the build, and try and punish it. I don't like backing away here, then. I think the PC actually wants to stay close, and drop a soul chips on the front line, and then use this rock here, kind of, to, uh, be able to, you know, come up here onto the second base, and over here onto the main. Of course, the problem with doing that on the new Torrent is that he can, of course, rotate his carrier back to here and then take the PC over to the, you know, this second base, if he wants. And indeed, you saw Egan was thinking of moving the carrier there, because it seems like, actually, he didn't have enough sand skimmers to fight there, but he does have the base runner, so he would have been able to win that fight. Rift Mode gives you the most success so far. Yeah, definitely in, um... Definitely in CVG, I would say so. When you come up to high-level GVG, though, you're often just gonna instantly die if you do this. Um, but any, any economy build, like, if you can, if you can, um, do it safely, it's always a smart choice, especially when you're new. Because you're not just gonna find yourself instantly behind that way. By the way, second PC, I think, was on the queue, right? Don't see it anywhere, though. Oh, we got a bit of a fight brewing over here. Pretty good biker, actually, from Houston. Nearly picks off one for free, even though he definitely does not have the, uh, numbers advantage. No upgrades, either. Picks off that scanner, it's gonna feel kinda nice. And he does have armor 1 here, so he's gonna be attempting to uh, break in here and do some damage to the main, but the skims wanna be pushing at the same time. Obviously, um, if these skims come in, yeah, this is what he wants to do. If those skims leave, then he actually has a better chance of defending it. So, you wanna always like push and pull your opponent off of multiple flanks, but it looks like the carrier is gonna be enough to hold off here. He did tech power 1, so... That's to be somewhat expected, and we do have the first Assault Rails coming out across the field now. Looks like A-Game has stabilized, and he's not going to take any damage to this push. 
Second PC is on the way for him as well. It looks like Houston cancelled his, he must have. Um, and he's got ref mode on the way, he's building one too, but... This will definitely put A-game ahead. Fairly significantly, you would say. If Houston texts to air next, uh, obviously these rails would die if they leave the bases. So A-game's not going to be able to, like, push. He's not going to be able to just instantly kill Houston because he has the tech advantage, because he doesn't know. He might just die if he did that. Um... His carrier's kind of spazzing out here a little bit. Do you hear that? You know, they they like to do that. <laughs> this is really good scouting from A-game, though. You see this? He, he catches everything he needs to know. This guy's not on that base. He's going to see this PC come out, probably. And he's also going to see there still is no air tech. But also there's no railgun tech, so... Distush distustion. I'm gonna see distustion. <laughs> oh, this is quite a bad fight for Houston here. Doesn't want to take this one if he doesn't have to. Instead, he's gonna kind of stick in it. I think they trade like two for six or something. So Lancaster Square Law, right? Pretty nasty. These guys are in a good spot though, actually, because they want to just chill out over here. If the railguns push on them, obviously they're close up, and that's uh, a place for assault ships not to have the advantage. Houston, now he really needs to be building assault ships here to deal with this. But see, he is on two base, and he will be on three base soon, so he's not that far behind. It's just he's got to deal with all these rails somehow. And actually, what Agen could do that would be pretty fun, he's got a base runner, you see, right? If you bring the base runner and the PC up in the front line with the army, you can maybe make a push out of that, because obviously then you've got some anti air. But it looks like instead, he's just gonna say, look, I've got a big army here, right? So if I go up to 3 base, I force my opponent to go up to 3 base to match me, but also he's got to deal with this army that I've got. The Assault Ship finally pops here, but these skims are getting some serious damage done. Also, taking this base runner back would be really nice. Oh, he manages to clean up the Assault Ships too. Looks like they tried to make a run for it. They probably should have just stayed in, in the pit there. So he manages to clean up two Salvagers, it looks like. Um, still no air tech on the way, so I think this is probably lights out for Houston, unfortunately. He's gonna go siege instead? I don't know. I think you really need air. Yeah, okay. He's, he is gonna tech that. But it, it very well may be just too late, um, cause these rails are on the doorstep. And this skim just being so annoying, but he's got all the info he needs, right? Sees where the weak point is too. Obviously, assault ships are not going to be there, so here come the skims. Base runner healed used at a good time, but this is a lot of DPS. You're not going to outdo that. And these assault rails are on the doorstep. I just don't know what you're going to do about it. Not to mention this flank over here, which is also pretty devastating. Although, it looks like A game is kind of wreck blocking himself there, but it's, uh, that's whatever. Salvagers picked off the line almost instantly. He's got no interest going for this PC, it seems. And that probably is wise. Best chance of uh, getting nothing from the push is to try and dump your damage onto the PC instead of the salvagers. And Houston agrees, yeah, this is this is probably over. He is going to surrender. And that takes the series to 1-0. But I gotta say, I've gotta say, the fact that he goes for assault chips at the start instead of just making only skims already tells me he's like, he gets it, like he knows what he needs to be doing. So that, that kind of warms my heart. Definitely, I would say, a bit outclassed there, but I mean, most of us are when we play against A game, so I wouldn't uh, wouldn't think too much of that. Game 2, he's going to have the first pick this time. Does Houston? He picks Galzine again. And A game, always a fan of avoiding the mirror matchup, he's going to flip to Coalition. Of course, uh, as he said in the, in the chat during the first game, he plays pretty much any faction, so he's fine with that. <clears throat> and Houston is going to pick the Boneyard for this map. And seems to be getting a pretty good spawn for it, too. We tend to favor this spawn because of the third base is much more safe as opposed to this third. And also, um, if you happen to be doing a rail rush... <laughs> oh, really? So you're just kind of... You're just kind of flipping factions around to try and... Just, like, have a bit more variety in the play rather than trying to avoid some specific matchup? That's interesting. I didn't know that. I thought you were trying to avoid the mirror. Well, cool. Good to know. Oh, oh, base runner heal being used there. It doesn't have a huge cooldown, so it's probably going to be all right. But <laughs> What's Houston going for, by the way? It's probably ref mode first, you would assume. He's got five salvagers here, though. He's 
This carrier is kind of on top of these guys. This is something you learn when you're playing Galaxy, and you want the carrier, like, just a little bit away. Yeah, like, right here. Oh, he's spending the money now, though. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. Oh, oh, where, where are you going? That's a little bit too far. Like, right, right there. So that, like, the, the back line of the carrier is, like, right here. That's where you want it to be. Oh, he had Skimmer Feb. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm blind. But see, this is too close again, because, like, you watch these guys. When they finish, uh, he's moving again. Okay, this, this see, that's the perfect distance. But otherwise, these guys will move off to the side and then come back, so... You play Galzine enough, you come to learn exactly how you want to have the guys, like, the carrier orientated, uh, compared to the Salvagers. Orientated? Oriented? I don't know. Sorry, I should be watching the build from A-game, though. It is going to be an AV rush. Um, first save, he out at about 28 minutes is about as fast as you can go. It almost looked like he was trying to teleport this guy, but he would never do that. He would never do that. I had actually an accidental teleport in, I think, JC5 or something, a game against Discara, where, like, I had a PC spawn, like, here randomly, like, in the middle of a big fight. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Or maybe it was just, like, a game for fun, I can't remember, but it, it definitely happened. I think I had the carrier, like, with its back facing, like, on the terrain outside there. Happens, you know. I still- I'm kind of confused what Houston is going for here, though, because if he was going to be doing rails, certainly he has more skims than this, right? Yeah, see, he's got this huge float right now. Uh, Railfab will be done in time to stop this, but I mean, he could actually have ref mode right now if he wanted it, but... I don't know. Here, one second. Yeah! Uh, yeah. When do you need me? Um... Oh, this is not muted. Sorry, I'm just like shouting into my microphone because I think it's muted. That's alright. We're we're cleaning out muck from the backyard of our of our house today, so <laughs> Anyhow, a bunch of AVs coming up here to pressure the base from Houston. He does have an assault rail coming out though, so he'll probably be okay. But like I said, like he could have ref mode right now instead of these skims here. Um, and he's not like pushing on his opponent, right? So I'm just kinda confused like what he wants to do here. And by the way, this is a huge number of AVs from A game. Uh, normally you see like three or four built. He's getting the production upgrade, and he's doubling down on Like, he wants to just... He wants more. So, th this is definitely a bit more of a concentrated push than you're used to seeing from him. Assault Rails are in position, though, like I said. This AV gonna back away. Now, what A-game probably wants to do now is try to get up onto 2 base. But see, he's, he's invested into the carrier production upgrade, so I'm kind of confused as to, like, what he's gonna go for here. And you can see, by the way, no money, right? That's generally what you assume you'll find when someone has the uh, production upgrade started. And you'll you'll see, off of one and a half base like this, he's able to double produce AVs, but like staggered, not really, you know, at the same time. And uh, they're not going to do all that much against like a bunch of assault rails, which is what Houston has got. Now he goes up to ref mode. Um, so it's kind of weird. It almost looks like a blind answer to AV first. Uh. I don't know. It's kind of a weird build, but he is going to start filling out that base. He's got three assault rails. I actually do want to see him build more, but he doesn't know that A-game has got all these AVs. So I was saying he probably won't be able to get that much done. I guess that's because I have perfect caster o vision, right? So I know that there's going to be like a lot of these AVs, and Houston doesn't. So if he undercommits on the army, he probably would actually be in trouble. But he sees these guys now. And once they're seen, A-game is immediately going to start moving. So the answer has got to be power one, right? That's what you want to see him get. Uh-oh. Power 1 should be on the queue here, but we'll see what he ends up doing. He's going to move these guys to try and answer this. In that case, that's alright. Just got to conglomerate this flank here. Try and move back onto one base. But he's actually got a heavy rail now, so I like that choice. I didn't notice that was who was in the queue there. But see, this is the problem. He really needs to be back on one base here, because he's not going to be able to hold multiples. Ooh, and in fact, taking 
Kind of a bad trade over here on the flank, as he was attempting to root out those AVs that got up into that, um, like behind that hill right there. And again, no power one, this carrier is not going to do a whole lot of damage. The Space Funder going to use its heal ability, try and keep itself alive for a little bit, but it's not going to save the heavy rails, so it's going to go down. These AVs going to kill this assault rail too. They're going to have a field day at this point. Obviously, um, that should be a full eco wipe. He will probably kill the PC too if he chooses to chase it, he should. Uh, yeah, he sees that. And these AVs have done their job, they can just kind of leave. <laughs> yeah, that's when you remember. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a good thing to note, like, anytime you think your opponent is about to push on you and make a play like this, right? Because a lot of eco plays actually, or sorry, aggro plays, they actually revolve around your opponent sort of overreacting. Um, in which case, you kind of want to be like stone cold, don't react unless you need to, right? But if your opponent you think is going for like your eco, actually trying to kill these guys, they're actually trying to deny, like destroy your second base, all that kind of stuff. What you want to do is like instantly tech power one, and then uh, if you're getting pushed on like multiple flanks like this, make it one flank, right? And pull this PC back to the carrier and just hold one base for a bit until you're able to like push back out onto your second. Um, so definitely just a little bit of a lack of respect there from Houston. And you can see by the way A-game is doing what he should on the back of it. He's expanded onto his second base. And with this sport cruiser out, he could be on a third pretty soon. So even if Houston had not surrendered there, I mean A-game was going to be at a massive advantage. Um, so yeah, it's really important you tech power one when you're getting rushed like that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll move on to the next one.